Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry on Vel'Koz in the mid lane. For your runes, take Arcane Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendent, Scorch, alongside Biscuits, Free Boots, Double AP, and a Resistance. We're up against a Pantheon and AD mid laner, so we want armor instead of magic resist. Vel'Koz plays well against both ranged and melee champs. His main weakness is getting ganked, so you need to watch your positioning and pay attention to where the junglers are or likely to be and play around your words. Up against Pantheon, we should go for a W max, shove him down out of lane and crush him. Against matchups where pushing doesn't really make a lot of sense, or they can step up and punish you when you go to W the wave, then you'd want to max Q first. But regardless, we're going to start Q first and then max W first. And he lasts. They have a Fiddlesticks, so we shouldn't be getting ganked too much. Pre-6, once he's level 4 maybe. Every time you kill something with your Q, it refunds essentially half of the mana. So you can get back more mana than your Q even costed if you kill three things with it. Alright, missed one minion. Get him with our Q and then an auto attack. Auto him again. We don't want to miss minions though. If you're missing a minion to hit the enemies with a single auto attack, it's not really worth. This is why melee matchups struggle so much against Vel'Koz. They're so easy to hit with abilities. Against ranged champs, you focus more on just farming mainly. You should still look to hit them with your W, even though it doesn't do that much damage. It does apply your Arcane Comet as well, so it's an easy way to get things stacking. There we got him with our passive, which applies the true damage. If you hit them with three, basically three abilities, you get that extra true damage burst. Your W applies it twice, once on the initial and then once it blows up on the back end, similar to a Poppy Q. He's super low now, he just needs to reset. We're gonna kill him in lane if he doesn't. He has no way of surviving this. Whoa! Got it. Oh, Fiddle's mid. Yeah, so Pantheon should've just backed. All he's gonna do is waste his jungler's time. We had Scorch on him, so it's focusing us. He's just, he's super, super overstaying here. That is okay with me. He's going to miss so many minions. Like, realistically, he was going to lose all of these anyways since we had him so low, but now he's going to miss even more. Go ahead and hit a biscuit since we're below half health, half mana. We'll go ahead and stay in lane. We'll hold on to our TP. Go ahead and use a potion. I want to be full health for when he gets back. We'll W through the whole wave, try to get it with the front end and the back end. And then you want to get off your passive, so go in for that third hit. You can roam on Vel'Koz. If you're going to be playing that way, you should consider taking Ghost. You can take really any summoner spell on Vel'Koz. You do want to try to have Flash, though. And then for your other summoner spell, you can go Ghost, Exhaust, Barrier, Heal, Teleport. The only thing you wouldn't normally take is Cleanse. Because Cleanse is kind of trash. <laughs> but really anything else will work fine. And so, yeah, you wouldn't normally go Ignite or Cleanse. Anything else is fine. Should have gotten my E down in midair. We do need to reset off that. We took a lot of damage. We can also get some decent items. On your first back, you're usually looking for a Dark Sill and an Amp Tome. First item rush is extremely situational. For example, you can go any AP Mythic on Vel causing and get great results. It just depends on what you need. If you're up against a Giga Burst Assassin like Zed, pretty much always go Crown and Shattered Queen for survivability. If you're trying to maximize your damage versus tanks, then you're gonna be going the Leandri's Torment. And you can even go the HP, the HP no mana Mage Mythics. When he goes in for the last hit, we look for our E. You ideally want an E when your W is up because your E will hold them inside of your W. Since he's so low, I'm just trying to get some damage on him. I don't really want to freeze it. I want to shove this down. We ended up maxing Q first because this guy's playing so aggro. What this lane should have looked like is basically he lets us shove in waves and then he farms underneath turret. But since he's willing to just like kind of try to fight us, going for the Q max is better. Again, with our passive there. Q is much stronger for the trades, getting the bigger slow and the massive uh, damage it applies as well. But like I said, if he was playing this the way I think he should be playing this, we would have gotten W max first. You just shove waves down, then we could look for roams. I 
want that cannon. We need to put our E on ourselves when he jumps on us in midair. We haven't had to shorten our Q very much yet. I've only done it a few times. We could R him here and potentially kill him. The thing is, he has his shield up, so we'll most likely just end up wasting our R. You can maintain the stacks of your passive with your auto attacks. It won't apply any more stacks, but it will keep it refreshed, helping you to land what you need to land. Go ahead and get a ward down. We'll play towards this side of the map. We see their bot lanes underneath their turret. I don't think our R there would have quite killed him. So go ahead and hit the whole thing with the W and then try to find a Q on the back line. Kill all three of them real quick. And try to keep our passive stacks up here. And nice. Using the angles, getting lots of mana back. He has R, he can R me here. I need to back up a little bit. We can roam to this. We have our R up. Pantheon might even R to this. See Blitzcrank's in the bot lane still. Yeah, this is a great fight for us. This is exactly what you want. People to already be in combat. And then you just swoop in and get all the glory. We got some Dark Harvest, or I should say Dark Seal stacks out of that. Pantheon has no R. We can shove mid for free now. We don't have to worry about Blitz we see in bot lane. Perfect. Very nice. I'm going to keep maxing Q first. Really just for the uh, slow. The extra slow duration is really nice. Versus how many times we're able to land it here. It also doesn't really cost you any mana, which is cool. Your W per level, the mana goes up a little bit. But since we're constantly killing things with our Q, it's essentially free. We'll line up our W, try to push him off the minions. Yeah, he took so much damage for that one. He needed to give that minion up. Whenever you're last hitting on any champion in general, if you're going to lose more than a fifth of your health for a minion, it's definitely not worth it. He lost so much health for that one range creep. We both knew I was going to do it, but he went for it anyways. That refunded all of our Q. He's looking to jump in on us, so we'll hit him with a W. Now he's tanking our minions. I'm surprised he just did that because even if he jumped in on me, I would have knocked him out of the air and he was tanking my minions the whole time. So that was kind of interesting. We're really low on mana. We need to feel back up with Q. Oh, we completely whiffed there. The minions kind of moved the last second there. A little bit moved the last second. We'll aim for the middle. Get them both. Very nice. I assume his R is going to be up, so I'll hit it once to get the plate. You need to assist or be very close to the plate when it breaks to get the gold. And I think I should have gotten it there if I didn't get it. I wasn't really paying attention, but I did get my auto on it. R is back up against their team. They don't have any real... They're not really that tanky, so we don't need Leandres. So instead, it's feeling like a Ludens game. Ludens can help you position really well because it gives you a big movement speed bonus. It's on a really short cooldown as well. I think it's like around 10 seconds. Damaging abilities when you hit them. Uh, grants you 15% movement speed for two seconds. Yeah, 10 second cooldown, and I believe it's affected by ability haste. Usually you're looking for Lucids on Velkaz because you're going to end up getting a Void Staff later in the game, so having the flat penetration doesn't do much. Plus, Velkaz has a lot of true damage on his R. If you've applied your passive to somebody, within the last seven seconds, your R does true damage. Your R, and your R applies three stacks of your passive. Q applies one stack. W applies one to two, depending on if you hit him with both sides. Your U applies one, and then your R applies three if you hit him with the whole thing. So in a perfect world, you want to hit them with your other abilities first to get as much true damage as possible off of your R. And that is why generally on Velkaz, you go for Lucids and not Sork Shoes, because if you're playing him optimally... You're doing mostly true damage. His R has the best AP scaling in his whole kit at 125% AP scaling. His Q's 90%. His W's essentially 45% AP scaling. His E's 30. 125 on a big AoE long ranged ability that is not really a skill shot. His R is his bread and butter, same as MF. That's why I say Velkaz is really just playing AP MF. Very, very similar in terms of his positioning and his main damage tool playstyle. Velkos plays best in environments where the game is like really slow. 
though the less kills that have happened in the game per minute the better because the longer it goes and the more you get to play for 5v5 team fights it all causes an absolute menace he plays worst in games where everyone's playing like they're on bath salts let's say your bot lane dies four times in the first few minutes of the game and then you're constantly getting roamed on this game we've been fortunate i have been looking at the mini map a lot to where now i see blitz is missing so i'm playing towards my top side because i see their top laners there it's just some game sense just in case blitz is roaming we might do a part two if these guys ff pre 25 we'll see that was a really weird cue on my part get him with a w have him walk through it we'll shorten that on him we got you just hit him with the r from there nope fiddle was there I'm not gonna die from that, I could tell. I play a lot of fiddlesticks, I knew that drain wasn't gonna kill me. I could've just flashed. I should've would sooner on the Pantheon. You can start your R immediately while you're using your other abilities. If you have the confidence that those abilities are gonna land, you might as well start up your R to get as much of the duration off on them as possible. Cause obviously, the farther away they get, the less of your R you're gonna land as they walk out of it. That being said, your R does have pretty good range. Pantheon has high base movement speed, so even though he's like tier one, tier zero boots, no boots, he's still able to kind of meander out of it. Fiddle's gonna have R. I'm gonna stay away. I need to get some. Okay, there he is. We're chilling. Get him with a W. We'll hover E on ourselves here. Just click a little bit less and then hover your cursor. Have more impactful clicks, a higher quality, lower quantity, so then you can hover more to get off some really good, uh, essentially buffered abilities. It's very important on skill shot champs in particular, especially on Velkaz, because you're he has such a long travel time. You just got a bunch of mana back from that Q. And if you can manage to build a lead, which I'd say is somewhat consistent on Velkaz. As long as you're not getting camped, then it's very hard for them to... Uh... That's frustrating. That's frustrating. Oh, yeah. It can be very hard for them to uh, even stay alive underneath turret since you have so much range. I didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. It's whatever. Got the wave shoved, board over the wall, survived the gank. And we're getting some plates, so it's almost as good as getting a kill. <laughs> uh, if I could have done it over again, I would have just hit Blitzcrank with a W. Your W, you can cast while moving on Velkaz. So if you hit him with it, you'll get the speed up from the Ludens like this. Bomb. You pop the Ludens against champions or against minions, I suppose, and get the movement speed bonus. So... You don't usually use your E to push wave because when it's on a cooldown, they can all in you. You pretty much always hold on to your E unless it's going to kill them when you cast it or set up the kill. Go ahead and take this camp. So yeah, you can go Riftmaker on Velkaz and get decent results. Rocket Belt isn't bad. Honestly, Night Harvester isn't bad either. If you are going to go for an HP, no mana mythic on Velkaz, you will have to grab a tier though so you don't run out of mana. That will be somewhat important. Oh, that is tragic. I'm not going to stay for that, though. I need to leave. I'll shove wave real quick and reset. Fiddle's on my haunches here, so. Just need to get out of here. We have R. We'll base. Grab Lucids. Lucids are insane on Velkaz. Really, 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 really good. Cheaper than Sorks. They do way more than Sorks. Having your sums up is way more valuable. Second item rush. Typically, you go for Zanias because Zanias got buffed to where it's actually a really good late game item. It gives you 80 AP, 45 armor. You still, I believe, only give 40 or 60 AP. So even if you have this item in the late game, even if they can't get on you, 80 AP is super, super solid. No shame in building this item. Like I said, if you are up against a hyper burst matchup who's going to wait for six and all in you, like a Zed Akali. Or even a Cassidan. Exhaust is an amazing option. Heal or Barrier. A defensive style summoner spell. Teleport in a way is defensive. It's, it's a very neutral one. But against something that can all in you. You definitely want a defensive summoner spell. 
And you, like I said, you never go ignite and you never really go cleanse. It's just pointless. Yeah, I have a feeling this is gonna need a part two. These guys are getting slaughtered. Got him with our E kind of in midair. Drop a big fat R on his face. And we didn't quite kill him there. That's disappointing. He lived with less than 100 health. Very disappointing. Guess he does have Merc Dreads. He might army from base, so I gotta watch out for that. Yeah, they quit. We'll go ahead and do a part two. It'll be interesting to see another matchup give you guys a different different flavor. Hopefully they pick a ranged matchup. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to part two on how to carry on Velkaz in the mid lane. It's going to be the same thing. You need to constantly watch for the enemy bot lane and top lane and make sure you're not going to get ganked. And you need to play towards the lane that you know where it is. We're up against a basically a Lee Sin Cho'Gath, which might do some roams. Got to keep an eye on him. Playing against Switch is really annoying. The meta on him right now is run Ghost Flash. He can roam mid after he shoves waves or even roam mid from base on AD Twitch. Super frustrating. I don't know if we're actually going to want to shove lane. It depends on how Sivir and Soraka play. If they know what they're doing, they'll, they'll Giga Shove. One bad thing about Ghost is it does zero damage inherently. So having heal, they should win the, the 2v2 level 1, level 2, level 3. At level 6, Twitch starts to win those. We're still going to start with, uh, yeah, you kind of have to start Q. Even if you land both sides of W, it does less damage than Q. Plus, it doesn't refund mana, so starting W is a good way to erase all of your mana. Generally, want to stand a little bit off to the side so you can find better angles. Got it. Now we can pressure him with auto since we've killed more minions than him. As long as we're not going to take damage to do it. We don't want to really stand still too much versus this guy. If he stands still against skill shot champs, that's when you get hit. You got to be willing to take an auto attack to dodge an ability. We'll walk him down here. He's dead. Yeah, Velkos has some pretty good all-in potential if you hit level 2 before them, and especially if they're in melee. I don't know why people keep picking melee champs into me. It's pretty hilarious, though. That's one thing Velkos actually does quite well. His, his most challenging matchups are level 6 all-in style champs like Talon and Zed. They can be very, very hard to deal with. And in terms of a long-range matchup that's kind of annoying, I would say... Ah, uh, Zerath, to be honest. Zerath is pretty frustrating. We don't have the gold for me to buy what I want to buy here. I'm going to get stuck on a Sapphire Crystal. It's not that useful. Velkaz isn't very mana hungry. I'm not even going to TP back to lane. This is pushing to me. He's only level 2. He can only push it so fast. As a melee champion in general, you don't want to be taking huge trades until you're level 3. Generally, melee champions out trade at level 3 over range champs. But level 1 through 2, range champs can overcompensate with their range auto attack advantage and kite you out. So I was just, I think Cho'Gath was getting frustrated because we were kiting him out and he didn't like that. Ah. Oh. Uh, we just missed like all of those. I was, And we took so much damage for it too. <laughs> that was not good. Cho'Gath's roaming bot. That actually makes a lot of sense. Got the wave pushed. We'll go for the Q-Max first again. W-Max is solid. I just prefer Q-Max. It feels smoother. More kill potential on your six with the better slope. He had a full passive there. Oh, he landed that though. A, he took some damage for it at least. I didn't realize he had all of that still up. He was saving it for the reverse cheese. He's gonna wait till I go into auto and then try to hit me with a Q. So we just need to keep our eyes open for that. I think Lee Sin's coming mid here in a second. I need to keep an eye. Yep. Walk that back. Yeah, that sucks. I missed my E. I should have just held E and kept autoing. Landing E is incredibly challenging if they haven't committed to anything or if you haven't landed your Q. Your Q really sets everything up. Q slows them so you can land W, E skill shots and your R. 
Q and E both set up your R. Go ahead and TP back. I'll grab double pot. Ah, never mind. I guess one's fine. Cho'Gath's super low. He doesn't have TP. He's going to fall behind here once I dump this wave on him. Smack it down with a Q. Get all of our mana back. The Lee Sin's incredibly low, so he's going to have to reset. Rip that minion. If I could stop his recall there, that would be peachy. I don't think we got it. Tough angle. Got to keep keep pushing. We don't want him to be able to roam for free. Nice. Yeah, staying mobile on Velkaz is extremely important. You never really want to stand still. It makes it hard to use angles or your range advantage. He, why is he acting like this? His Q's on a cooldown. It's like he's bluffing. He's bluffing at me right now for some reason. I'm going to kill him here in a second. He is about to die. Oop. Oops. All right, we got his flash. Solid. We'll pop Biscuit and continue to shove the wave. Take it from the side. Utilize our passive against it. Utilization of passive is key to actually shove waves. Just one, one W, one Q can do it. If you're in a hurry, you can throw down dub, two Ws at once. <laughs> he actually stayed. What a freaking goofball. Leeson must be on his way. This feels like a bait. It's not worth it, though. He's missing so much. He's over... Like, he's trying to bait me. Listen, so on Twitch is here. Twitch is missing bot. I'm chilling in the back. Oh, the minion actually got in the way. What the heck? I don't know where... Okay, Twitch is bot side. Cool. Got him. Yeah, you can't walk at Vel like that. He needed flash. What a friggin' goofball, dude. Make sure you have your cursor hovered in the right spot. Have it ready for where you think they're going to be. I'll be taking that. And I kind of want one plate and then I'll reset. One plate would do just fine here. Nice. Yep. It's time to back. Watch out for his Q. His Q's already on a cooldown. We're chilling then. We'll head straight out of here. Go for Ludens. If it is a kind of point and click all in burst style level 6 champ, you should be going for uh, Crown. Crown's really, really good. If their whole team's melee, I think Everfrost is also good. They have Twitch though. So Everfrost would only be so useful since he way outranges that. So yeah, against Giga Burst, gonna kill you. Crown against Giga Tanks, Leandris, Ludens just in general because lots of damage plus mobility. And um, I don't think you normally go Night Harvester, but I have seen good results out of Rift Maker and out of Rocket Belt as well. If your team's super, super kind of engage heavy, like maybe a Malphite, and they don't have. If you can tell they're going to struggle with that, a lot of times rock, Rocket Belting in can help your team a lot. Get you some. Why is he pulling him away though? I don't really want to R for this. But I will. He was going to get away. He was on Ghost. The Skarner had actually pulled him the wrong way there. Twitch is starting to get a little bit fed. Cho'Gath roams bot. Cho'Gath's missing a lot of uh, minions to do these roams though. It's not easy to roam against a power pusher like Velkaz or Malzahar. Zurath, because you will lose a guaranteed amount of minions. Drop it on herself. He gets absolutely chunked. It looks like he's trying to R somebody there. He does get the kill. Not worth though, because they still lose all these minions. Unfortunate for him. Not sure where Twitch is at. It makes me nervous. We need to stay near this wall to flash away. 
I'm gonna stay to push this and then we'll back off. I'm gonna hold on to E. Yep, sure enough, he's here. We're gonna use this wall to our advantage, splay this out. Yeah, later Twitch. Using walls and structures makes it super easy to land skill shots. It limits where they're allowed to juke to, to where the chances of landing your skill shot are almost guaranteed if they're going to commit to where you think they're pathing to. So if they're going to still play aggressive and chase, it's guaranteed. Or if they're going to, the only way they can basically get out of it is if they full retreat, which they can't kill you at that point anyway. So you're still getting what you want. It's really what it comes down to. Down goes Choders. I've only really seen Cho'Gath get good results versus melee champs. Playing Cho'Gath against range is so hit or miss. He has, Cho'Gath has to be willing to just play underneath turret for a while. Otherwise, he'll get chunked down and bullied early on. There's all of his HP. That's the main mistake he made was trying to trade early with a range champ. Velkaz as well. Isn't bad against slow and mobile champions. So yeah. Once again, Q max is kind of nice because the slow duration is increased. It makes it easier for your R. Your W is only damage and a shorter cooldown. So your Q realistically gives you more per level. It's just in some matchups, you kind of have to W max. If you feel like they're going to constantly keep you shoved in and you don't want to be shoved in, then you kind of need W for that. Got our passive off on that guy. I see where the Twitch is. I see where their top lane is right now. You can zone him all the way out. If he runs forward, then you just shorten your Q and you'll hit them anyways. So. Got him with a little bit of damage. Give me that minion. See, I'll see where the Twitch is. Their top's dead. We're chilling. We'll shorten it. There he goes. He's too slow of a champ. Oh my god, my Scorch. Scorch actually doomed me there. Got him. R's up. I don't think we can kill him with R alone. We need to hit something first. Even if it's just a W. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hit him with a single W, just like the front end of a W, and that was enough. He, that's why he had to flash, because my R was about to trigger passive, and he was, gonna, he was going to like implode. All right, we got it. Nice. We'll go ahead and shove wave and leave, since we're already here. Might as well. We already know where the Twitch is, so it's safe. If I didn't know where people were on the map, I definitely wouldn't be staying. It would be too risky. Once again, don't use your... Oh, I might actually die from that E. I didn't realize Lee Sin was coming back. He came back really early, man. He's been coming mid a lot, but his ganks haven't been good. As a jungler, you do not show up to a lane if your laner is struggling. That is not the criteria for a gank. You go to a gank if you're going to get a kill out of it, and it's practically guaranteed. We could go for match. Second item. Still think Zanius would be the move here. If you're out of position or if they overextend for you, Zanyas is really the best item in the game for keeping you alive. Let's your teammates help you out. Plus, you can blow your load. You can drop your QWE pretty much instantly, less than a second. Pop the Zanyas, come out, blow another load, which is what you want to do. I'd say the main difference between a Vel'Koz and a Zerath is... Zerath skill shots are less consistent in the sense of Zerath doesn't have So basically Zerath's W is Velkaz Q. If the enemies don't have boots, they literally can't dodge Zerath W unless they have a dash in their kit. If Zerath puts it over them like scripted, they cannot dodge it no matter what. But if they have tier two boots, they can literally get out of it. Or if they have a dash or tumble. Velkaz Q is similar to that, except Velkaz Q is on a much shorter cooldown than Zerath W, so there's that. Oh, wait, how'd my Q miss him there? What the heck? So it went like right through him. Get him with the W. We're going to kite this guy out. 
Our Q just missed him again. Like, what? What is going on, dude? I don't know how much burst he's going to do there, so I'd rather just Zonis and not die since we're sitting on so much shutdown. We might need to do another game, man, because I want to put show you guys against a ranged champ. Against melees, it's too easy. Whenever you use an ability, they either have to back off or get hit when they go in for the minions. And you can trade them down with your autos. So I want to show you a ranged matchup. We'll do one more after this. But if it's another melee, I don't know if I want to do another one after that. <laughs> it's so weird. It's probably because they think I'm picking Velkaz bot. I banned Bane the last two games, so they probably think I'm playing Velkaz APC. They don't even realize I'm going mid with it. This might actually kill him. Yep. <laughs> We didn't. We only hit him with uh, Ludens before we landed R, which doesn't really mean anything because our R would apply Ludens anyway. So we basically didn't hit him with anything before we landed R. So I'm saying Felcaz R is insane. Hey friends. Oh, that Q was terrible. I shortened it way too soon. Goodbye, Renata. No, what just hit me? That's what hit me. It's freaking Cho'Gath from behind. Run 25 stack mesh. I'm gonna back to turret. I don't know where Twitch is. I don't feel like dying. Giving him a thousand gold. Chill right here. If he can get to me, it'd be through here first. We'll hover cursor right here. Since I'm farther on this side of the turret, I would see him there first off the turret vision. Gazanias. Now we see him. He's bot side. Third item, it's a toss up between uh, Robidon or Shadow Flame usually. If you already have a bunch of mesh stacks, you usually just go for Robidon. If you don't have mesh or Dark Harvest stacks, then you'd usually go for Shadow Flame. If they have a massive MR stack, you could even go for Void Staff, third full item. They're, they don't have much MR though. I'm the only real AP on our team, so they didn't build that much magic resist. And I mean, even if you do stack magic resist against Velkaz, since his art does so much true damage, in theory, the entirety of it, if you've already applied your passive to them within the last seven seconds, it, the magic resist only does so much good. Goodbye, my friend. She's got nowhere to go. You're dead. Oh, no way. I shortened it on him. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, that's kind of hilarious. Kind of funny, dude. What a game. The one eye. They need to make a like Eye of Sauron Velkaz skin with the Lord of the Rings sound effects. That'd be so freaking cool. Game is definitely over. Someone on their team is voting no. They, they, there's no way they can come back. Our comp's so strong. We have double front line with the Velkaz in the back line. It's incredibly challenging to deal with. Ooh, Soraka, heal me. Twitch just got a thousand gold and he got ghost extensions off my death. He's gonna die though. He's being greedy. Doesn't really matter if he dies. He doesn't. Twitch didn't have any shutdown gold, so he was gonna risk it for the biscuit. Wait, did I? Was my Zanias up? If my Zanias was up, I definitely should have used it there. It's time to go for Robidon. In theory, their team's tanky, but they're not. They would only be tanky in the late game. If they had a, let's say they had a Leona, I probably would have gone for, for Leandri's this game. They're just not that tanky. AP Cho'Gath isn't that tanky. You don't have to get, unless he's getting fed. Like if he's getting big early, you definitely want to get Leandri's. But since we are dominating him, getting Leandri's was not essential to where the movement speed bonus from Ludens is extremely valuable for staying alive on Velkaz or just running people down.
I don't need this red buff, obviously. Just helping him take it. Should definitely play for Drag Soul. Any objective where you can five man team fight is ideal for Velkaz, because obviously every single one of his abilities is AoE damage. So <laughs> you can pretty much land all four of your abilities on all four of the enemies, including your passive, which is essentially a fifth ability since it's so impactful and does so much damage. He's an all AoE machine. That's something that Zerath's also not. Zerath E is not AoE. And you can say, oh, Vilkos Q can only hit three targets. That's pretty AoE heavy, honestly. Three, a three huge person slow, quite impactful. I was looking for the cheese kill there. This is probably warded. Or you just knew I was already here. Team setting up Baron. If they had a really fed person, I'd be behind my teammates at all times. But since they don't, they can't really threaten a kill on me. I can retaliate and blow Twitch up. So even if Twitch pops up, we throw a Q, W at him, we hold on to E for a little bit until like a Q lands or until he's committed to a certain pathing. And then Honestly, if Q or E land, if either of them land, we'd go straight into R. And if he doesn't have flash, he's going to die. If he has flash, he could probably kill us or at the very least force my Zhonyas. He's dead. These Skarner R's are so... I don't know. He just needs to hold them still. He doesn't need to drag them. I'm missing all my skill shots. I hit something there. Help me, team. Save me. Got him with my E. It kind of just pushed him into me, though. Kind of funny. Little bit funny. I need to reset. Twitch is going to come eat me. I don't want to die. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, Twitch is missing a lot of health, at least. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, guys? I have a treat for you. We have another melee champion. I'm just kidding. We're up against an Ari. Pretty interesting matchup. It's somewhat skill-based. With that being said, this is definitely a W max kind of game. Once again, you want to get your first point in Q. For our runes, it's the same exact thing. We've been running Arcane with Mana Flow, Transcendent Scorch. This gets magical with double AP and a resistance. Against AD champs like Talon's uh, Trist, you take armor. Against AP champs, clearly you'd want to take magic resist. Ari is a magic damage champ who builds AP. Uh, like Corky is one of the only champs in the game that builds 80 items, but he does like all magic damage. 80, but does magic damage. His passive does like 70, 80% magic damage conversion, and then all of his abilities do like magic damage. So just a bit of a weird champ. It's always painful to see someone build armor against a Corky, not realizing that they've doomed themselves. Up against Hecarim, that's actually very, very annoying to play against. Hecarim's super challenging to get away from. He's really strong right now too. I don't think the nerf on him is live yet either. It's live tomorrow, I believe. Go ahead, keep our autos on the wave. We don't want to be farming from underneath turret necessarily, so. We're going to want to get as much of these as we can without wasting a lot of mana like she's doing. Uh, I tried to get her with that one. It barely nicked the uh, range creep. We'll go ahead and do a soft freeze. It's not our true freeze, but we're slowing the wave down repositioning. We are now on gankable, and she is highly gankable. Don't know where she went there. I don't know if she's trying to get us to push, but I'm level two first. We haven't missed a minion yet. I'm going to try to bait out her Q here. Thought I could get it out of her, but not quite. She's tanking my triple minions, so we need to shove down this wave. 
get her with our arcane. Ooh, we're gonna miss that minion. Yeah, we didn't have our auto ready in time. We need to get this pushed. Nice. We've only missed one minion so far, I think. Got it. And got the arcane comet since Q slow, she can't outrun it. We're gonna go ahead and play towards bot side since we see exactly where the bot landers are. And I think Hecarim will be top. Most junglers start bot side with leash and path towards top side. Oh, I didn't get that minion. That's unfortunate. Getting CS is super important there. She pushed us off that minion. It's unfortunate. Oh, she's being so aggro. She's going to eat a W for that is what she's going to get. I'm maxing W first. Me and her both drained a lot of our mana. I actually have less than her. I'm using so many W's is why. It'll drain your mana super fast through W usages. I need to set these up for the last hits. Oh, nice. This minion's going to hold the wave perfectly. And now we have it perfectly centered. She needed to push us back there off the wave to crash the wave. But now her jungler perpetually can't gank us because she's not... She let go of pressure when she should have kept pressuring. She could have been worried about where our jungler was, though, to be fair to her thought process. My arcane comet's up, so is my mana flow, so I would like to hit her with something. Uh, yeah, we got her with the mana flow there. That's good, because we're going to be looking for a reset soon. She took teleport. I mean, I took teleport. She took ignite, so we want to start taking advantage of that. We're lining up some big passive hits here. She can't really stop us from shoving since we went uh i shortened it she dodged it but she took more ranged autos from my minion since she did that she had the juke forward into them took an extra volley so go ahead and look for the tp here grab a dark sill into that pretty good back for us we didn't have to use a potion or a biscuit either so we're doing pretty good here we have a little bit more cs than her as well she overstayed here, I think. That second W is kind of poop from me. All right, yeah, we just got to shove the wave. I couldn't all in her because I know Hecarim's in the area and I didn't see his HP and I don't feel like dying. We're already playing from an advantage since we got to use our teleport and she couldn't set a kill up on us. I don't really feel like dying for a dumb reason. Nice. So she's gonna miss at least two minions of XP off my melees. I don't think she's actually gonna miss anything else. Okay, she misses cannon. That's actually really good. Yeah, a little butthole. Oh, I gotta get out. Yeah. It was a little forced on my part. I'm gonna pop biscuit. That was so messy from everybody. They did get my flash, which sucks. I feel like I can actually stay. I'm going to stay. I have a lot of potions. I had both my potions and biscuits. The lower on health and mana you are, the more your biscuits heal you. So might as well stay. She is about to have her R though, which is... We know she does have her R, I think. Yeah, she should have it. All right, and there is her R. Ooh, she's dead. <laughs> but it was an execute. Are you kidding me? That's so unlucky, bro. I'm going to stay for this wave. I don't see their bot lane. I doubt Hecarim's still here. He seemed like he was kind of low. We're going to use our E to try to push this as fast as possible. We have vision on Hecarim. I don't have vision of their bot lane, though. Got it. All right, we're out of here. She's going to lose some more minions and look at our CS advantage. We are up in terms of last hits. What is that? Two, 10, five, 17 minions. That is more than two full minion waves. It's nearly three full minion waves. It's very, 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 very solid. I'm incredibly happy with that. 
we're gonna super out scale her as long as we position correctly. Velkaz out damages pretty much every champion in the game in team fight since once again every single one of his abilities is AoE, including his passive. So just gotta position well. And in a solo queue environment, people play so aggressive over the top forced plays, you can punish that. Similar to how a fiddlesticks does. Gonna max our Q second now. Keep dropping our Ws on the wave, force her to use her uh, abilities to push my minions as I outpush hers. She could be roaming right now. She's going to miss a whole wave if she actually does. I can't really follow because, yeah, I don't. I didn't know where their jungler is. And if her and Hecarim are camping a bush, I'm going to die. So sometimes, most of the time, following someone who's roaming, especially if they're more mobile than you, is just a terrible idea. They can set up a kill on you. Just stay in, stay in your lane generally speaking and Q's on a cooldown we'll look to push that we push the whole wave Ooh, so much faster than her she's catching up in CS though she's only down 11 CS now she could be roaming that ward's giving me high value she eats a W. She eats another W. I shortened it, but she just kept running back. I guessed wrong. It was a bit of a 50-50. Shortened it again. I guessed wrong, but she did miss a minion out of it, so it's worth. Q's very inexpensive mana cost. Very, 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 very cheap. I think Hecarim or someone's here. She's acting weird. I don't know why she stepped up that far. Spread my minions out a bit. Got the whole wave push, and she's taking damage because she has less range than us. Oh, man. I, I, I'm going to stop shortening these. She just keeps running. She's not actually trying to juke. She's just doing the in Indiana Jones boulder maneuver. We try to outrun the boulder. We got to adapt. Hecarim's on my left side. I see the, where their bot lane's at. I don't have to worry about their rotation here. She's going to be playing really aggressive, so I'm going to throw... Yeah, just get some damage on her. I don't, I'm afraid to R her because I think Hecarim's here, and I don't want to die. Oh, we got it. Nice. Beautiful. I don't know where their bot lane is. I don't know if they reset. I wasn't paying attention. I'm going to chill for a second. We're chilling, dude. Look at that. Get that tentacle action. W the whole wave. Set up a Q. Oh my goodness. We actually missed that. We missed that one too. We see where the Hecarim is. Still don't know where their bot lane's at. Okay, I see him now. We let it push her all the way back. Which forced her to miss a minion. And then it forced her to burn charm for the other minion. That was a good trade. I don't think we hit her with that one. Yeah, she did some damage there. We're gonna whip R on it. Down she goes. Well played by the Nautilus. Greedy for Ari to try to solo kill me when she's not ahead. And I didn't have that much damage on me either when she looked for that. They might actually get first turret. We're building an XP lead on the Ari. We have our free boots as well. She didn't take free boots. So we're up gold, XP, and plus an additional 300 gold from the free boots. Very nice. Very, very nice. Should I stay for this play? I don't know. Maybe I should just roam here. I don't like roaming that much on Velkaz unless I have Predator or Ghost. But in this case, Ari is going to be so far away. I think it's the move since they're playing so aggressive. Oh, I wish Nautilus didn't take that. It's really unfortunate. All right, he gets it. He's trying to use his support item. Got it, and got it. All right, I'm going to TP back mid. Could stay for a bot play. I'm a little nervous about where people are at. Looks like Ari gets a plate. We already got three of her plates. We'll go for Ludens. We don't have enough for anything else, so. I guess we could build towards Shadow Flame. It's 
So we leave base with a little bit extra gold spent. If we could have afforded it, we would have gone for tier two boots at this point. Luckily, we were decently quick. 340 base movement speed is actually incredibly high for a range champ. Generally, range champs are 325 to 335. So 340 is actually really good, plus free boots and an additional 10 bonus movement speed from it. I just realized I didn't mute everyone this game. No one's really been typing or pinging. It's kind of funny. Gonna hit him with a QR. Did a decent amount of damage to him. I think we missed our Q though. Okay, we landed that one, that's for sure. That is also one disadvantage of going W max. When we hit him with that QR, our Q is not doing, instead of doing 240, it's only doing 160. And it's not slowing them for as long either. So we're gonna be doing some long range supporting. Q max is better for that. W Max is definitely the way to go this game, though. Having a constant way to shove Ari down is, has been so useful. I don't know if this is worded, so I have to back up. I don't want to get charmed for free. It must not be worded the way Hecarim's pathing. Ari's still not a full item, so she can't trade off with me very well. Ah, that Q didn't kill. That sucks. We're missing way too many CS. We should basically have 150 something CS right now. I only have 146. Typically having 10 per minute's good. This has been such a passive lane though that uh, we don't really have an excuse for missing as many as we are. At least not a good excuse. Don't want to risk missing that with an auto at this point in the game. Since my E's on a cooldown, I have to play a little bit farther back. I'll play towards my bot lane here. Try to poke her when she goes in for this last hit. Didn't shorten that one. She guessed right. My R is up. I'll soft follow this. I don't have to fully commit though. I'll come back, shove wave. She still can't match our wave push, so she's losing like some turret. Yeah, it's not easy for for that to pan out if he doesn't have any pressure. We're so close to our turret, it's not going to be very easy for him to pull off. See where the Ari is. We could roam here. Might be the move since R is up. Once again, if you want a Giga Roam, don't take free boots. Rush Lucid's Dark Sill, take Predator. You can Giga Roam a lot. Or, or just take Ghost. You don't have to take Predator. Ah... Oh. Really needed that to land. They're expecting me to shorten it every time. It's so bizarre. I can't move. I just couldn't move. I got blocked so hard. I don't know if I was getting blocked on the Hecarim or the Nautilus, but I couldn't move. I was trying to get to the wall to flash. I had sustained too much damage and I believe Hecarim still had R, so I wasn't gonna flash the wall once I was almost dead. I should have pulled off from the dive once it initially fell and I missed my first Q. So that's my bad. Uh, I'm actually thinking about swapping over to Zanya's here. Zanya's would be so much better than Shadow Flame right now. Oh well. Well. I don't know. Like, I do know, like, <laughs> Zanya's would be better. Because Hecarim's going to dive on us, so is the Ari. I don't know why we're fighting on Herald 2v3. It's kind of... That's kind of poopy. Once I died, there was no reason to fight for neutrals like that. I'm kind of missing my cues all of a sudden. They're not respecting my cues is what's going on. All right, I'm trolling a little bit. We do a little bit of trolling around here. We just need to stay alive. They're probably gonna try to dive me through this turret. I have to play towards my right side. I think that's the second Herald they've gotten. Ari still isn't a full item. She's playing so aggressive though. We can hit her with Ws for free when she does that. 
my W out ranges all of her moves in terms of we don't have to stand still to cast it, so she can't punish. It's a nice thing about your W on Velkaz, it's not very punishable. Oh, unfortunate. Dragon's coming up, need to stay alive. See where their bot lane is so I can play really heavy towards my right side here. I don't want to use another W on this wave. I want to keep my charges up since I'm up so far. Got him. If you shorten it every time, they'll expect it. Sometimes you just need to let it rip. It needs to become a 50-50 if you don't have actual pressure to land it. He took so much damage for that. That wasn't worth for him. I need to rotate. This is getting weird over there. Hey, Ari. You're taking a lot of damage there, buddy. We got her R and nearly killed her. Probably should have just saved my R since we'd already chunked her, though. What are you doing? She's crazy. I had already chunked her. She can't do that. But she said she's not fed. If she was really fed, I w that would have been a good play. Oh no, I'm dead. Oh, maybe not. Oh, set pushed out. You didn't want it. Yeah, we need to just back off here. I don't feel like dying. Need to stay alive. Ours on cooldown. Really, 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 really want Zonis. Can't afford it. We're going to have to go for the Shadow Flame because we're already building towards that. They have Herald. They're about to lay it. Give me that Shadow Flame, baby. Keep him away from my turret. As long as our turret doesn't fall, we win. I don't get the Q. <laughs> get wrecked. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the power of the eye. I'm missing so much health now. Give me some respect. No one's respecting my cues. They know they can't fight for this dragon. They're missing too much. Don't mind if I do. Oh, I needed to line that up better. Now I got to deal with this little bunghole. The little raptor wasting my Ws. Hecarim wants to herald this wave. My, my wave won't die to it, though. My wave should... I mean, my turret. Herald only scrapes close to a half of the turret, I think. These guys are being super aggressive. He took it top side. I should probably stay mid. Eh, I don't know. No one's really helping him. Doesn't look like these guys are even sure if they want to stay or not. I'm going to lose my mid turret off that roam. Sucks. Lost nearly half its health there. At least we didn't lose inhib turret though. Just need a good team fight with me and the Twitch. We have the damage. It's just a matter of getting it set up. Ooh, feels bad. I'm not going to hit her with R. I don't want her to R into me, charm me, and cancel it. And champions like R, who can pretty much instantly cancel your R, it's usually best to hold off on using it until it's clear they can't do anything about it. Ah, she's playing hard to get. Dang, missed a minion. <laughs> oh, how does that? That's. I must have eye problems because to me that looked like that was inside of him. Some fishy business going on here. Some champions hit boxes are absolute jank. Oh, what's that? Your uh, dash is on cooldown, my friend. Probably shouldn't use your dash like that just to poke me. Risking certain death to simply do maximum like half my health. 
Oh, we got it too. Let's go. My TP's up here in a minute. We can continue to just throw out max range bombs on these guys. Oh, miss. Dang. I need blue buff. I'm running out. Only have 300 mana. It's enough for... It's like two ability cycles, pretty much. Oof. My goodness. It's warded. Probably know we're all here. Ah, oh, feels bad. I wanted that for the mana. We'll go ahead and reset. We can pick up double needlessly large rod. Ooh, never mind. I guess we can't. <laughs> D-ring doesn't sell for anything, dude. It sells for... 40% of its original value and all the other items sell for 670. They make all the cheap stuff punish you. They don't want you stacking it. There's not a single unique or there's not a single stackable passive in League in terms of building it yourself. Like when you stack Dorans, it's not a good thing, it's a bad thing. It doesn't passives don't do anything. It doesn't say that, but it used to. They used to call it like unique passives and non-unique passives and on the unique ones. That's why people used to say Robodons don't stack. They don't stack. Don't build multiple Robodons. That type of thing. Now League of Legends went full CCP and they won't even allow you to build what you want to build. They completely restrict you. They lock out the item once you buy it. The only stackable items they let you stack for some reason is the like the Dorans ones pretty much. Pretty much. Locking me out like I'm not paying my mortgage and I'm protesting or something. What's what's going on with that? I've been good, please. I don't want to make iPhones. <laughs> Those factories, they put suicide nets up. That is really interesting. Very interesting. Bada boom. Push the whole wave. WQ. I guess two Ws, one Q. Ws are in such a short cooldown at this point. They're only about nine seconds. All I need is one QR and then a squishy dies. Looks like Twitch wasted all of his health. Wasted it. Squandered it. Oh, let's go. 500 damage. Hecarim's looking to... Hecarim's looking to drop a dookie on my head, so... Oh, I got charmed. We're, we're gonna hard lose this fight now. If I don't land a massive R, we just hard lose the fight, basically. Like you saw. Oh, I didn't get charmed by R. I got charmed by Seraphine. That actually makes more sense because I didn't see the Ari charm. She was so far away. I waited to use my R once Hecarim was kind of chunked and out of position to stop me with his R quickly. I could get off most of my R channel, but I got hit by a Seraphine R like, instantly. I don't know if she... I don't know if she reacted to my R, predicted it, or just randomly threw out hers, but I didn't get to use like, any of my R. She canceled it immediately. I don't think it has that fast of a cast and travel time, though, for her to wait until I start mine and then stop mine that fast. I'll have to go back and watch that later. Got double needless. They are double drag, and as long as they don't get soul, though, they don't, they don't have an inhib or anything, so the game is still in a fine spot. It was mainly, not to point fingers, but it was mainly Twitch that last fight. Losing all of his health before dragon fights. Very uh, bad. So it's very bad for the team. <clears throat> Before a dragon fight, you keep your HP high. You let your tanks face check bushes. It's that simple. Because it's a huge risk for zero reward. So there's no need to do that. So we're all going together. Just let the tanks lead. We knew they weren't on it either, so there's really no rush. My R is on cooldown. We don't really need to fight here. Launch that Q in with it. Ah, oh, really? Feels bad. 
<laughs> I should just use my W. R's up in 20. Why? Are, why though? We're not even over here. I guess it panned out kind of. Like barely. Holy crap, that was so forced though. We didn't need to do that. I would be 10 times more down for that if my R was actually up. But since my R's on cooldown, that's so forced. At the end of the day, you can't really, you can only control your teammates a fraction of how much control you'd want on them. And you can, even then you can't really control them. So you're just kind of kidding yourself. You can only like gently to a very slight degree uh, influence them. <laughs> uh, man. Maybe he, there was some piece of information he knew that I didn't, but from my perspective, they were all alive. We didn't know where they all were, and it was just like a random engage. Maybe there's something on the minimap that I missed. Hey, buddy. You just took about 450 damage. And then I push. Give me back that mana. They are getting testy. They are not like getting poked down like this. Hecarim eats a Q. I'll launch mine through there. Oh, that missed Ari? No way. That was right on her. It doesn't add up. It just doesn't. Two people just died. We need to stay alive so they don't get barren. I need to keep my mana up here. I can't use my W to push the wave right now. I can use my Q because my Q refresh. Every time I, you kill something, it gives you back half of its cost. So, As long as you're killing two or more things, you're getting mana back for killing things with your Q. I'll be taking that. Lee Sin's dead anyways. Plus, I need the blue buff at this point in the game. Blue buff only on a behind Lee Sin's only going to give so much value. We have a lot of CS. A lot. 300 would be pretty much perfect. Close enough. Getting all of our mana back. I'm thinking about resetting. Is she going to missile me? She had vision. I guess she was on lock screen or just wasn't paying attention there. She should have missled me. Oh, look for that. Maybe I should just go Zanyas here. I feel like I should just Zans. I can dodge life ending CC. Like an Ari charm. It's probably worth it. Shove mid real quick. Doesn't look like they actually want to fight for this dragon. Aatrox might have TP. That could be what's happening. We should definitely just rush it though. Right for the pickings here. This needs to start it. They're not even over here. Just take it. Nautilus shouldn't be zoning. He should be over here tanking. I can zone with my abilities. Wait, Hecram actually got that. Oh, get wrecked. They all died for that. I don't think that was really worth it for them in hindsight. Oh, she nearly just died from my W. Sucks that she lived. I got a base. Seth's going to get his bunghole pushed in over there. Oh, Twitch got it. Let's go. Yeah, I got to help this guy out. Yeah, let's go. That was a terrible E on my part, but at least I'm landing W's. Oh my goodness. Jeez. Sheesh. She lands two Q's in an auto. <laughs> Holy crap. Man. We do have some HP as well, so it's not like we're full squishy. We have 200 here, and then we have 100 here. We have an extra 300 health. It's pretty much an extra two auto CS to put on us. Could always Zanya's there, so but still that damage. 
R is doing 1500 damage, and in theory could do 1500 AoE true damage. That's solid. Not including passive damage as well, which R applies three stacks of. You want to try to hit them with at least one ability prior to R, that way you can do some true damage though. In a perfect world, you land a Q, W, E, R, and then you get a full true damage R off. Oh, nice ward, Kaisa. These guys are not wanting us to Baron. They have double Flame Dragon. It's pretty frustrating. Lee Sin wasn't able to smite that with a Q smite. If they get the soul, it's going to make the game so much harder. It doesn't look like they want a team fight. Twitch should be able to solo R. She's so far behind. She doesn't have anything, really. She's going to have to land everything to kill him. Actually, everything. Uh, Kaisa doesn't outscale the Twitch. Seraphine outscales Nautilus. Set and I think Aatrox have similar scaling. Hey, sit on that. I'm going to need help or I'm going to die. Nearly killed him, landed everything, just zero help. It's unfortunate we lose that fight even when Hecarim solo R's me and we still did so much damage. It must have just been because Twitch wasn't in that fight and he's a main source of damage for our team. Looks like they're going to get Baron. This game is incredibly losable. We don't have proper peel. Yeah. Oh. It's going to slow them down. I think Set still dies here, though. Oh. He has Dead Man's. He could definitely stretch this out. Dead Man's is a really good escape item. Rip. Well, they didn't get Baron. That's good. We can get our Zhonius. I think this game all comes down to kind of who gets this Draxel. And we keep our turret alive. Let's go, dude. That's how we do it. Keeping it alive all day. Gives us a lot of uh, vision. Gives our team a place to retreat to, even though it hasn't been prevalent in any of the fights we've lost. Need better frontline focus, better team fight setups. I don't even know if our team was there. All I remember is Set and Lee Sin. If Nautilus is there, in theory, we should be able to just peel for me, I think. I out damage their whole team. If Hecarim's allowed to solo me over the span of 8 seconds, I mean, it is what it is. He's going to cancel my R with his R. He's kind of went tank Hecarim build, too. Interesting. It's weird. These guys are acting strange. They're acting like they're ready to fight. Hey, we missed Cannon. <laughs> no, no. My minions. Hey, got the Q. Soa needs to reset for Aatrox. Or we better get this dragon because we're about to lose. If we, if, <laughs> if we lose dragon, I'm going to be so ticked off. Aatrox should not have TP'd. That was such a colossal mistake. That was such a mistake for him to TP. Why is no one focusing Aatrox? All right, we actually just lost. Like, what? How did we lose that fight when they were playing a man down and we killed Kaisa at the very start of the fight? That makes zero sense. That actually makes zero, 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 zero sense. Like, they didn't have a person in that fight and Kaisa died at the start. They don't win that fight. Oh, man, that's so frustrating. That's so frustrating. They get the soul. I didn't want to R. I didn't want Ari to charm me over the wall or something. 
Plus her R could be up at this point and we'd get absolutely annihilated. I don't want to say the game is functionally over, but I don't think we can carry it, man. If one of their players dies at the start of the fight and we're all still full HP and we lose the fight, we just deserve to lose the game as a team. It's just unacceptable. All we have to do is, oh, wait a minute. There's five of us and four of them. We can take Dragon for free. And that's what should have happened. But instead, our front line kept continuously engaging forward, stranding me, essentially. Like... All we had to do was focus Aatrox and we win that fight 10 times over. Aatrox was almost dead. Needed one other person to hit him. Aatrox wouldn't get his resets. His R would be wasted. His TP would be wasted. He really shouldn't have TP'd for that. He was going to get free inhib. Pressure the end, but... Yep, it's GG's. It's over, dude. I kind of trolled there. My positioning wasn't good on that last death. It's GG's though. Regardless though, I hope you enjoyed this Velkaz gameplay commentary. If you guys did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Looking at damage, we did do the most damage in the whole game, even though we were constantly getting focused and not really getting pilled for. Uh, typical Velkaz stuff for damage taken, very middle of the pack. Four runes, really high value. If you guys enjoyed this Velkaz gameplay commentary guide, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.